What's up you guys and welcome back to Hip Hop Urban Pop. Let's get right back down to the countdown for the forgotten girl groups of the 90s and the 2000s. Number 14, Cleopatra. Cleopatra is a pop R&B UK girl group from the early 90s. The group consisted of sisters Cleo, Yana, and Zayna Higgins, originally going by the name Cleopatra and the Attractions. Their parents were singers and their mother noticed their talent early on by entering them in competitions. Cleo was the lead singer, while her sister served as her background singers and dancers. In 1992, Cleo and her sisters Yana and Zayna won a talent show at the NIA Center in Home that set the girls up for stardom. Cleo, who had been writing songs since she was nine years old, said that before getting a deal, her and her sisters used to catch the train from Manchester to London and go from label to label to label, singing at the top of their voices. In the mid-90s, their manager got one of their rehearsal tapes to Mark Morrison, who quickly acknowledged their talent. Mark got the tape to Warner Brothers and they instantly contracted the girls for a meeting, which resulted in a record deal. Cleopatra soon grabbed the attention of Madonna and she immediately took them under her wing. Cleo recalls the group first meeting her in Paris and then her taking them out for an amazing meal. The girls then released their debut single, Cleopatra's Theme, which was released on February 2nd of 1998. It peaked at number three on the UK singles charts and broke into international success, peaking at number 26 on the Billboard Hot 100. Their music video also gained heavy rotation on the Disney Channel, VH1, MTV, and BET. Following this, Madonna signed Cleopatra to her label Maverick and in April of 1998, introduced them to the US at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards, where they performed Cleopatra's theme. On June 30th of 1998, Cleopatra released their debut album, Coming At Ya. The next two singles, Life Ain't Easy and I Want You Back, a Jackson 5 cover, both peaked at number four on the UK singles chart. During their time touring and attending events at Wild the Regent Palace Hotel in London, Cleo and Aaron Carter would run wild together, throwing water balloons through windows and playing Ding Dong Ditch in the hotel. She also spoke on meeting Destiny's Child and being very excited, saying, oh my gosh, nice to meet you. But she continued to say that they didn't seem interested in Cleopatra. They were hanging out with the R&B group IMX and quote, they only had time for them. During the MTV Awards in Milan, Cleopatra had yet another celebrity encounter with Lionel Richie. He came into their breakfast room asking if they would sing a song from their album for his daughter, Nicole. In September of 1998, Cleopatra filmed a 60-minute Disney Channel special called Cleopatra in Concert, where they performed their biggest hit aboard the Disney cruise ship. Coming up next on Disney, we've got a concert cruising your way. It's Disney's original music special, Cleopatra in Concert, from aboard Disney's cruise ship, Magic. Meet the girls from their beginning. Then join them aboard Disney Magic for their first ever television concert special. It's Cleopatra in concert. Don't miss the magic! Coming up next, only on Disney. In that same month, Cleopatra was also invited to perform in the UK leg of the Spice World Tour. And they also performed at the Vatican Christmas Carol concert by request of Pope John Paul II. On Christmas Eve of 1998, CITV premiered Cleopatra's one-hour Christmas special for their new sitcom, Coming At Ya. In 1999, a second season was released titled Cleopatra in the House with Friends. Following this, Cleopatra released a fourth single from their debut album, Coming At Ya, titled A Touch of Love, which peaked at number 24 on the UK singles chart. In February of 2000, Cleopatra recorded a cover to the disco song, right back from where we started for the Disney Channel original film, an extreme goofy movie.
Then they later released their first single off their sophomore album titled Come and Get Me. The song peaked at number 29 on the UK singles chart. The next single, You Got It, was the only single to be released in the US. And despite it being the number one requested song on Nickelodeon, and making it onto TRL and 106 in Park, the single failed to chart. On August 22nd of 2000, Cleopatra released their sophomore album, Steppin' Out, and they were also invited to perform a mini concert for the Sultan of Brunei and his royal family. Cleopatra served as spokeswoman for CoverGirl and also sang the theme song for the CoverGirl Triple Lipstick ad. CoverGirl introduces Triple Lipstick. Triple Lipstick. The Triple Benefit Lipstick. Protection. UVA, UVB, SPF 15. Later in 2000, the girls were paid 500,000 euro to sign a publishing deal, but stated they didn't see a dime from it, recalling that people were always trying to rip them off. And although they loved their management team at the time, they didn't know what they were doing. Amid this confusion, Cleopatra moved to Japan to promote their third single, Yes, The Party's Going Right. In Tokyo, they refused to sign a release form because they were tired of not seeing what was in the contracts. To make matters worse, due to some changes at Warner Brothers, there was a lack of promotion for the single Come and Get Me. Following this, the album's release date was pushed back and eventually was never released at all in the UK. Cleopatra was then dropped from Warner Brothers in 2001. Higher ups wanted to keep Cleo as a solo artist. They wanted to write all her songs, which Cleo said didn't make any sense because she's always wrote her own songs her whole life. Cleo declined the solo deal, stating that she could not agree with management and the label having complete creative control and being men. Over the next couple of years, Cleopatra would go on to do a couple more performances and appearances. In 2009, Cleopatra appeared in the TV series Pop Goes the Band. In 2016, Cleopatra performed as the fairies in the play Sleeping Beauty pantomime at the Hoodville Gravesend. In 2017, they performed at Pride at Queen's Gardens in Hull. And in 2019, Cleo and her sister Yana appeared on the TV series Celebrity Coach Trip. In 2007, Zaynum made a brief appearance as a mystery guest on BBC's Two's Never Mind the Buzzcocks. In 2011, she gave birth to her daughter and later announced on Instagram that she is a proud member of the LGBTQ community. Zaynum has been seen in the studio working on solo music that she actively releases on her SoundCloud. After Cleopatra disbanded, Yona began teaching street dance and cheerleading in deprived areas of Manchester. In 2012, she received her diploma in health and social care. Yona now has two children, a son eight and a daughter 10. In 2020, she also performed in a Panama production of Aladdin. Yana currently works as a complimentary therapist with dance and mental health infused classes. Shortly after Cleopatra was dropped in 2001, Cleo gave birth to her daughter Chica. With the backing of Warner Brothers, she was featured on the pop opera singer's Russell Watson's album. Cleo later went on to become a trained pastry chef in dreams of opening her own cafe shop. In 2006, she gave birth to her son TJ with X Factor contestant Marlon McKenzie. In 2007, she released a single titled Feeling Like This, and she earned a slot on the Girls Aloud tour. In 2013, Cleo appeared on The Voice. She revealed that she chose The Voice over X Factor because she didn't want to be judged on her history, but The Voice ended up doing just that. In 2014, Cleo joined the cast of West End's Thriller Live that toured the UK and 29 countries in Europe. And in 2019, she performed in live tribute to the Queen of Soul special called Aretha Franklin's Songbook. Number 13, Allure. Allure was formed in 1996, consisting of members Aaliyah Davis, Akisa Mendez, Lalisha McLean, and Lenny Belcher. So quick introduction, Lalisha, Akisa, Lenny, and Aaliyah. <laughs> Aaliyah, Akisa, and Lalisha attended LaGuardia High, while Lenny attended Julia Richmond High. At this time, the group went by the name So Intense. Over the next two years, the girls worked on developing their sound and found management connections that led them to poke up Trackmasters. He heard them auditioning at a Bronx community center and quickly began working on getting them a deal, and then changed their name to Allure. Poke managed to get the girls a record deal with LaFace Records, but unfortunately, it ended up folding. 
One day in the studio, Pope was mixing one of Allure's songs called Story when Mariah Carey came into the studio. She was really into their sound and loved their voices on the record and asked who they were and expressed that she wanted to meet them. This sport allure a date with destiny. They got to meet Mariah Carey and ended up singing Tonight by Escape for her and Tommy Mottola. They were then signed to Mariah's label Crave Records in 1997. The first release for my label is a group called Allure and um, they're four girls. They're really, really beautiful, really talented. Um, I did some work on the album and the first single is called Head Over Heels. In February of 1997, Allure released their debut single Head Over Heels, which peaked at number 35 on the Billboard Hot 100. The single also peaked at number six on the Hot Dance Music charts and at number 17 on Hot R&B and Hip Hop Singles charts. Follow-up single titled No Question featuring LL Cool J was released but failed to chart. Then on May of 1997, Allure released their debut album, Allure. The album peaked at number 108 on the Billboard 200. Mariah Carey and two of her fellow producers, Corey Rooney and Walter Afanasiev, produced the group's third single, All Cried Out, a cover that was originally released by Lisa Lisa in Cult Jam. Released in August of 1997, out featured R&B Group 112 and peaked at number four on the Billboard Hot 100, number nine on Hot R&B Hip Hop Singles Charts, and number seven on Mainstream Top 40, making this single their most successful single to date, selling over 800,000 copies. In 1999, they released a fourth single, You're the Only One for Me, that was featured in the film Runaway Bride. In 2000, Crave Records was shut down in the aftermath of Tommy Mottola and Mariah Carey's divorce, and Allure was then signed to MCA Records. In September of 2001, Allure released their new single, Enjoy Yourself, which peaked at number 50 on the Hot R&B Hip Hop Singles Chart. Their sophomore album, Sunny Days, was released September 25th of the same year and peaked at number 68 on top R&B hip hop albums charts. The follow-up single, Cool With Me, was released but it was not supported by the label. Not long after this, Lenny Belcher departed the group and the remaining ladies continued as a trio. In 2004, Allure signed with NBA players Ron Artest's new label called True Warrior Records. And on November 23rd of 2004, Allure released their third album, Chapter 3. Unfortunately, the album failed to chart on the Billboard 200, and the two singles released, Hate to Love You and Uh Oh, failed to chart as well. By 2008, Allure formed their own label called ALA Records and released an EP titled Patiently Waiting. In February of 2010, Allure released their fourth album, Time's Up, and ended up signing with MC Shan's label, Bridgeworks, the next year. In 2014, they released their single, Butterflies, featuring MC Shan. Then in 2018, Allure announced they were working on a new album and released a single titled Like I Do, featuring a female rapper that they found in a talent search. Lenny has been living a quiet life outside of the music industry and has two daughters. and Lalisha are still active as a lore and have been making appearances at events and recording music. Number 12, Wild Orchid. Wild Orchid was formed in 1990 as a quartet originally named New Rhythm Generation. In its first year, member Heather Hollyoak left the group to return to college. Heather was replaced by Mickey Duran, but in 1994, she also left the group to work on the Nickelodeon show Roundhouse. The group members Renee Sandstorm, Stacey Ferguson, and Stephanie Riddell. Their debut album, Wild Orchid, was released March 23, 1997. The lead single, At Night I Pray, peaked at number 63 on Billboard's Hot 100, and the second single, Talk To Me, peaked at number 43. This album was nominated for two Billboard Awards, two Soul Train Lady of Soul Awards, and an American Music Award. Their album went on to sell over 1 million copies worldwide. Who had an influence on you? I mean, who did you not model yourselves after, but listen to maybe when you were younger that really inspired you? Well, when we first started the group, um, we used to um, emulate groups like In Vogue, Color Me Bad, Jackson 5, do like acapella type stuff. Talk to me, tell me what 
what's on your mind talk to me what are you feeling inside talk to me what are you thinking no talk to me tonight about love oxygen their second album was released september 29th 1998 and unfortunately was a commercial failure the album's only single be mine failed to chart on billboard's hot 100 and the album only sold 200 copies to this date The third studio album for the group, Fire, was set to be released in August of 2000. The group was planning to be on tour with NSYNC. During this time, singer Stacey Ferguson developed a substance abuse addiction to the drug crystal meth. This caused the group's participation in the tour to be canceled, and the album was pushed back to 2001. You were addicted to crystal meth. Yes. Isn't that horrible? I, I hear that's horrible. It, like, yeah. It's not good. Yeah. It makes you... It can make you crazy. What made you take it in the first place? What was going on? I was in a group called Wild Orchid. And it just wasn't working, and mm -hmm. so they tried to make us do different things, and it just started being, feeling inauthentic and, and wasn't really the style that I felt that I wanted to go for. And what I should have done was said, girls, you know, it's really time for me to go on my own. I need to fulfill this dream of mine to have a solo album. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to deal with that, that confrontation. I wanted to please them. So I got into a scene. I started going out and, and taking ecstasy. From ecstasy, it went to crystal meth. And, mm -hmm. and if, at first, you need at first drug, high. with any drugs, with yeah. any drugs, it's, you know, everything is great at the beginning. And then slowly your life starts to spiral down. Mm -hmm. It almost killed you, right? Yeah. You were and 90 these, pounds. 90 pounds at one point. What was your rock heard, bottom? My brain had been playing a lot of tricks on me. I thought the FBI was after me. You're kind of living in this kind of alternate reality. Mm -hmm. It's very strange. Were you strange. doing it every day? Yeah. Every day? Yeah. I started getting really paranoid. So I, I went one day into this church, and I thought that the FBI and the SWAT teams were outside of the church. And this is what the drug was. This telling. is what the drug was telling me. There's a lot more that goes. There's a whole dancing ninja that was on my balcony. Stacy did her best to perform, but her addiction caused her to mess up. Couple live acapella performance. Just follow me so patiently. Love will be waiting. Just follow me. Let your faith be free. I will be waiting. Oh, nice little mess up at the end, huh? <laughs> yeah. But it's real. The album was expected to be released in June of 2001, but RCA declined to release it and they were later dropped from the label. In 2002, Stacey Ferguson joined the group The Black Eyed Peas under the new name Fergie. Renee and Stephanie decided to continue on as a duo, keeping the name Wild Orchid. Renee went on to become a singer for children's music. She also provided her vocals for Princess Fiona's singing voice in Shrek 2. Renee has also been featured on the albums for Superstar Kids in 2003 and 2004, Mouser Size in 2007, Disney's Cuties, Camp Rock, and more. Stephanie co-founded a talent boot camp that develops young artists. In 2007, Stephanie's vocals were featured in the Bratz movie where she sang lead on two songs. She later married former Wild Orchid producer and Geffen Records president Ron Fair, and they have four children together. After joining the Black Eyed Peas in 2002, the next two albums she recorded with them sold over 18 million copies worldwide and included multiple top 10 and top 20 platinum hits. After the second album with the Black Eyed Peas, she decided to do a solo album which she had been working on for several years prior. Fergie's debut album, The Duchess, was released on September 13, 2006 and was a great success. 
The album had three number one singles, two top five singles, and sold over six million copies worldwide. By 2008, she was back to recording albums with the Black Eyed Peas and released two more albums before her departure from the group in 2018. In 2009, she married Josh Jamel and had a son in 2013. She now owns a winery with her father.